Um, all right, so in the last video, we tested our first route, this get route, and everything seems to be working well. So, so what we want to do is we want to test these remaining endpoints, but what we actually need to do first is actually initialize our database. So now you'll get to see how to actually do that using connects. So what we can do is we can say npx connects init. And this will actually give us this connects file here, which is a configuration file for um, how we want to set up our database, where we want it to be located, you know, etc. And so the first thing we're going to do is you'll notice we have development, staging, and production. So for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to wipe off staging and production. We're not going to need them. This will just be a de for development, right? So we'll we'll do that, and then so it's already detected that we're using SQLite three. If you're using a different uh, database management, then you would put that here. But we're using SQLite three, so that's all good. Our connection. So file name, this is actually where the database is going to be located. And we want to put this in API slash, let's call this to do's dot db3. Next thing we want to do is we want to declare migrations directory. We want that in. So this is actually going to create a folder called migrations within the API folder. Migrations are basically where we're going to declare what columns we want in our database, uh, what type of data those columns are going to take, if they can be nulled, um, if they can be empty, if they can be a string or a number or whatever. So that's where we're going to declare that. And this, once we run this, this is going to actually generate a file for us in a migrations folder in API. And next, what we'll do is we will declare our seeds. So seeds, if you remember from the first part in the React portion, we created some seed data. And, but essentially all it is is just, it's test data to initialize the database with. It's gonna be exactly this, but we're gonna actually initialize the database with this. Okay, so do the same thing here, directory, and we'll call this slash seeds, easy enough. And lastly, we will say use null as default is true. And this basically just prevents crashes when you're working with SQLite 3. So we'll include that. And this is all looking good to me. Okay, and then we want to actually create a, a database configuration file. So we'll do that within here and you know normally you would probably create a whole new folder for your database kind of keep that separate for your from your API but for the purposes of this I'm just going to do it in here it'll be fine so we'll say db config and so we want to import connects And so we want to create a config object. Based on, or actually, we want to import the config object from the connects file that we just imported. Or that, I'm sorry, that we just created. And then we'll declare our database. We can call connects and we can pass in the config object dot development. Because remember, this is exported here. So this is the config, right? So config is require connects file. That's this file dot development. So it's going to do this. So <clears throat> if you were using staging or develop or, um, or production here, 
then you would just declare the proper the proper item here. Okay, but we're using development, so that's what we'll declare there, and then we want to export it. Okay, so now we have our DB, our configured database exported so we can import it into some other files. But before we get to that point, we actually want to uh, run our initial migrations. And we do that by running npx connects migrate make. And we want to give it a name. So we'll say to do's. Okay, we'll see we got our migrations folder here. And Connects has generated this file for us, and you'll notice it's a pin or prepended this huge string of numbers in front of our to dos that we declared we wanted it to, to be named. Right? Um, this is actually a timestamp, and you should not change this for any reason. Like it might look ugly, but you have to keep it there because if you change this, then it's going to make your app crash. So, so leave that the same. But we'll go there, and you'll see that we get two functions given to us up and down. Up is where we're going to declare our database schema, so we're going to define the structure of our database. In down, we get, basically we create tables here and then here we drop tables. And the reason why you'd want to drop a table is if you make a change to your database, then you would need to like drop the existing tables um, before you create new ones, right? So, so I actually like to make this an async arrow function. Okay. And we'll await connects.schema dot create table. This is this is where we define the name of the table. Let's call it to do's. And it'll take a callback and our only parameter being the table itself. And so you basically want to start just about every table with some sort of ID, right? And you want that ID to increment, right? So we'll say table dot increments. And this is given to us, this is a method um, that actually does just that for us. So it'll start, you know, at index zero and it'll give it an ID um, and it'll just count up, it'll increment each time you add, add an entry. Okay, if we look at, let's look at our test data here. So we have our ID, this is our increments, right? And our next is a message. Okay, so what we can do is then table dot text that gives us a text field and this will only accept a string and we can call this well actually we want to call this message right that's our key here and then we can give this a we can pass this a second parameter and limit the number of characters if we want so let's say 256 if it if it's longer than 256 then we won't accept it and we'll also give it the method not nullable that means if you try to send if you try to post and you don't have a message then you will get an error and that's basically it for that and then so we'll do the same thing here we'll make this async And we will await connects.schema.drop table if exists. And that's it. Well, actually, we gotta tell it which table to drop. And so it is, of course, to do's. So we can save that. And now we're ready to actually run our migrations, or we can rerun our migrations now that we have defined the structure of our tables. So we'll say npx connects migrate latest. 
So it ran one batch, one migrations, and we'll see we have our to-dos file, which is a binary file. And so this can't be, this can't use it, but, or it can't read it, sorry. But that's okay, because we don't really need to read it in that way. And finally, what we want to do is actually add our seed data, right? So if we, if we make a call to it, then we want to, uh, we want to actually get something back. So, okay, so we've, remember we've declared where we want our seeds to be, okay? Same as migrations. We'll do this and we'll say npx connects seed make. Oh, of course we need a name. So this one connects is not going to give a timestamp for us. So it's a good idea to prepend it with with some you know some sort of incremental like like a good idea is to do 001 dash to do seeds or something like that you know and the next time you do 002 that kind of thing so you just kind of do it manually all right we got our seed file and we can take this and put it here okay let's make sure that we give it the proper table name and instead of delete, we're going to do trunk, truncate. And then we'll say npx connects seed run. So I'll run our run the seeds. Okay, yes, of course. So since our database is actually creating our ID for us, we don't need to have this at all. Okay, try again. Oh, so if you actually read your errors, then it's usually helpful. <laughs> well, sometimes. Uh, no such table name, table name. So I changed it here, but I didn't change it here. Okay, so we ran one seed file. Okay, and the, the final thing to do is we want to actually connect this to the database instead of the test data. So we'll remove that import and then we will import our database here from our config file. And then we're gonna run a query Connects makes this super easy to run queries on the database. So we'll say const to do's equals db. Okay. And the database, you'll notice here it gives us some info, the table name. So we'll pass it the table name. Of course, our table name is to do's. And what this is shorthand for is return everything from the table to do's, okay? So since we're gonna be making a query here, it makes a lot of sense to actually make this an async function. And we'll say try. Okay, so we want to await. So try to get everything from the to-dos database. And if you get it, then we're gonna say response.json. We wanna send it in JSON format, the to-dos, okay? Um, if not, for now, let's console.log the error. And let's give this a try. And there we go. Okay, we actually got our database set up a little bit ahead of schedule. So in the next video, we're actually going to continue uh, creating the rest of those endpoints. Um, and so definitely stick around for that. We're going to be finishing out the post 
input and delete routes. So we'll have a fully full CRUD functioning, fully functioning CRUD node application.